Hi, I'm Dave Hillowitz. So today I wanted to talk about my process for uh, putting together rock songs in Ableton Live. Uh, because of the quarantine, because sometimes I'm doing childcare, I just don't have that much time on my hands. So when I have an idea and I want to like put together a song, I need to be able to just do that really, really quickly. So yeah, this is my process. Uh, the track we're going to be working with today is not a conventional rock song. Uh, as a lot of you know, in addition to writing rock music, I also do library music and write film scores and stuff like that. When I'm doing library music, there are two genres that I work in. There's this sort of like dark, slightly uh, electronic cinematic stuff, which I just, you know, it's a genre I love working in. And then the other genre that I sometimes produce tracks in is what I call uplifting piano, which is to say it's, you know, a little bit more, um, I don't want to say schmaltzy, but you know, there it is. Um, okay, so I thought it would be kind of cool since I've got like yards and yards of this stuff. I've just got so many of these tracks just laying about on my hard drive languishing. I thought it'd be kind of cool to take an unfinished track and see if I can't like turn it into a rock song. So um, yeah, wish me luck. Okay, so here's the film cue that I have pulled up that we're gonna try to turn into a rock song. So yeah, that's the verse melody. Um, and there's a B melody, but my sense is that it maybe like didn't get finished and maybe that's why I never actually ended up um, turning this film cue into anything. Obviously, the uh, pianos will all have to go, uh, and yeah, the instruments will get replaced with rock instruments. But I think the A melody can definitely be used as a verse. But yeah, the B melody seems like a throwaway. I just can't imagine singing that and having it work as a rock song. So yeah, need to come up with another melody. Okay, it's been a couple of hours. I went out for a walk with my kid, and I thought a little bit about um, this project and uh, yeah, the kind of melodies that I wanted to have as a, a chorus. Uh, and I think I came up with something. Uh, right now it doesn't necessarily sound like anything, but I kind of have this sense that like once I put the drums and the bass in, it's going to sound a little bit more like a, a thing. So I've sped the whole thing up to 140 BPM before it was 108, so there's a pretty big change. I've also added just like a bass drum uh, just to kind of keep the rhythm just for now. So here's that verse again. And here's the chorus I came up with. Obviously the instrumentation right now is uh, not at all right for a rock track and it sounds super cheesy, but hopefully once it's me singing and there are guitars and drums and that kind of thing, uh, it'll start to sound a little bit more like a rock track. In fact, let's add some drums. But before we do, uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about this week's sponsor, DistroKid. As we all know, DistroKid is an easy way to upload your music to various streaming platforms, um, Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, and there, there are like 27 other ones I can't remember right now. Anyway, in addition to the regular stuff that you'd expect from a distributor like this, DistroKid has a bunch of great extra features. For example, you can upload liner notes for your tracks. All you have to do is go into the More menu, go into Credits and Liner Notes, and choose your track. For example, for this track, I could uh, say that I worked with a violist, um, although the violist in this case is me. Uh, or I could say I worked with a drum programmer, also me. Wouldn't it be funny if I just made individual credits for myself for like every single instrument on the track? Anyway, the point is, with DistroKid, you actually could do that. You probably shouldn't because people think you're a massive egotist, but you could. And if you're fortunate enough to work with other musicians, uh, you actually should. Um, okay, I think that's it. Uh, if you do decide to check out DistroKid, it would be great if you could use the promo link in the description to this video. Uh, yeah, now back to our regular featured programming. Okay, so it's time to add some drums. Um, I actually have a preset template that I use for drums. So anytime I need to add drums to a track, uh, specifically rock drums, I can just go in my uh, Ableton templates folder and I can find my vintage uh, funk kit drums. Uh, it's called funk kit. Uh, this is actually um, 
uh, a contact library from Drum Drops, um, but I use it, yeah, exclusively for rock music. So um, yeah, pay no attention to the name of the, the samples. So yeah, this is what it looks like. So the great thing about this setup is uh, this drum drops uh, sample library can be configured in such a way that you get multiple audio outputs from contact. Uh, and then you can kind of like mix all of the different mics after the fact. So even though you're working with MIDI drums, you really get to mix it almost like it's a live drum kit. Uh, very, very cool. So we wanted to add uh, a beat here, for example, right where the chorus is. Basically just... Uh, The other great thing about this drum drops kit is it has round robins. So I can program this as though I'm working with like an 808 or some drum machine, and it will still sound much more natural uh, because it's actually alternating the samples that it's playing back. I'm gonna futz with this now, and hopefully when I come back, I'll have some perfectly programmed drum loops. Okay, I put together some drum tracks, uh, and here's what the chorus sounds like. Obviously that piano still has to go. Uh, and here's what the verse sounds like. So really understated. Okay, time to add some bass. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull in my beloved indie bass patch, which I've been working on forever. Uh, and uh, here it is. I'm just gonna keep the default sound. And uh, yeah, now it's time to actually figure out what the chords are to this song. feeling the chord was going to change there. This part, I've just kind of like left it blank because I haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do. I guess I should put, put some chords in there. <laughs> hard, to, hard to tell whether or not that's going to work at all. Okay, now I'm gonna do the chorus. Okay, I've added the chorus now. Uh, here's what that sounds like. Okay, you get the idea. Uh, so, uh, I think we're almost ready to record actual live guitars. Uh, I do wanna add like one more element uh, to just kind of replace that guide piano because the guide piano is just, it's throwing me off my game. It's just so wrong for the context of a rock song that I feel like I need to put some other instrument in the mix uh, before I record guitars. So I think I'm actually gonna use sponge piano. Uh, if you don't know what this is, it's, <laughs> it's a weird uh, instrument that was uh, developed by uh, Pendle Poucher uh, from Sound Dust. It's a very short decay piano, and it's really, really great for um, repeated passages because it has uh, round robins. Actually, I don't think they're turned on. So basically, I'm just going to go through this entire track and just add like uh, repeated eighth notes just to kind of like thicken up the sound a little bit in advance of actually adding guitars. So, so I've gone through and I've added sponge piano into the mix. Uh, in the chorus, uh, I've actually added a slight melodic bit with the, um, the sponge piano. So yeah, I got rid of the original guide piano and I've added in this uh, sponge piano and I think it matches the tone a little bit better. Uh, yeah, time to record some guitars. Whenever I record guitars and vocals, uh, I record them in Reaper. And the reason I do that is Reaper has a really, really powerful take system. In order to do that, of course, I have to export all my tracks out of Ableton and then import them into Reaper in order to have something to sing along with. Um, yeah, let's do that. Okay, now I've got my guide tracks uh, imported from Ableton into Reaper. Uh, time to set up the recording tracks for the guitars. One of the themes of this video is make presets out of everything. And here, as you can see, I've got a preset for all the tracks that I need for recording guitars. 
When I record guitars, I actually capture three separate tracks. Uh, I've got the condenser mic, a dynamic mic, and the direct input signal. Uh, the DI signal on bass uh, gets used as part of the sound, but on guitars it actually gets muted. And the only reason I'm actually capturing that at all is just in case at some later date I decide I want to like re-amp uh, this particular take, then I have it. Uh, I'm going to record two uh, channels, one on the left and one on the right. Since it's obviously super boring to watch somebody recording the same thing twice, I'm actually going to show you both at the same time. So I wasn't planning on doing this, but I think I actually want to add a lead melody uh, to this as well uh, that will just kind of like float behind the vocals. I feel like while we're here, we might as well try to record some vocals and just, yeah, see how this thing's gonna sound. Um, yeah, let me get my mic set up. Okay, so uh, let me insert a new track. And I'll put it up here, maybe. Vocals, one. And my vocal chain basically consists of an outboard compressor and um, usually uh, I'll do uh, compression and EQ. Uh, if I'm being really lazy, like today, I'll use um, Wave CLA vocals, which is, it's actually pretty fantastic. Uh, I just use the start me up and I generally take a bunch of the delay and the reverb off and I take the pitching completely off. I've got my clipboard with my lyrics and uh, yeah, let's uh, give this thing a run through. Okay, um, let's record one that's off to the side. I'm going to call this one Vocals 2. Okay, the track is basically done. Uh, I've written a bridge, uh, I've added ear candy. Um, there's like a intro sound effect that plays. There are sound effects that are kind of like atmospheric that happen during the pre-chorus. I've even written a pre-chorus lead part, which sounds like this. Uh, 
so yeah, just like that, um, the song came together. All told, I think this took maybe like 10 hours because I spent so long on the bridge. Uh, as I said up top, uh, the sooner you can make decisions, the better off you'll be. Uh, anytime recording a song takes a long time for me, it's always because I failed to make a decision early enough. Uh, okay, I think that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed this video, found it entertaining, uh, educational, whatever. Uh, if you did enjoy this, it'd be great if you could hit like. Uh, and if you haven't done so already, I highly recommend subscribing. I've got a bunch of videos coming up, uh, stuff about contact, stuff about Ableton. So uh, yeah, see you soon.